I've just been broadcasting from upstairs a short while ago and um, conversation managed to drift round to my website again and also the Middle East. I've got guests turned on again now I think. So if they are still around they can come in again. But um, at the time I couldn't find the, the book that's on the desk in front of me now. You're looking at the edge of it now on the book, on the, on the uh, bottom of the picture. This is the book I got when I started uh, assisting the PE department at the school in, uh, in Waits. And we had very little equipment. In fact, most of the equipment was always what I took into school in my car. And... Um, squashed into a corner of the gym and the book was published in New York in 19... where's the date? there was a date on there somewhere oh 1981 so it's that long ago when the book was published and it was actually new at the time And that's Dr. Kelly there in the corner with the beard. And that's the title of the book. What he, he states, quite simply, is that the sport should be actually carried out by most people. For one reason or another. And uh, as I said before... It's an American book, and he's um, got a degree, I think, of some kind. Here we are, MH, M Master of Arts, PhD. And the key question... is this kind of thing here. Many people who used to exercise, they are people who dropped out because the program you tried didn't pay for your efforts. You can tell it's an American because the way the sceptic is spelt. In, in England they spell it with a C, not a K. I'm at the stage of the older adults. The trouble is that uh, joint pain tends to stop you doing that. And this is the key point here. This is why my website opens up starting at the age of approximately 13. This, by the way, was in 1981 and way before the idea of stem cells became uh, significant. But this is in fact similar to stem cells. If cells can differentiate during adolescence, as it says here, then what you actually do at the stage of adolescence or, or just about that stage is very important. If you don't exercise it during adolescence and become fat and flabby, 
then those cells that could turn into something else, namely muscle or fat cells, uh, stay as fat cells. And therefore your proportion of fat cells is greater than it would have been if you'd exercised. See the point? If they develop muscle during adolescence, in other words, if they don't use body weight exercises and lightweight weight exercises, they actually set themselves up with a better percentage of cells in their bodies than a kid who was uh, fatter. And that's the entire philosophy behind my website. That's the entire reasoning behind it. Show you it again. Science long thought that, if, that all of a person's body cells have become differentiated, become bone, fat, muscle or some other body part by the time of birth. Recent research has shown that a percentage of body cells do not become differentiated until adolescence. When the body spurt, growth spurt starts, basically. The condition of the person's body at that time determines what kind of form these cells will assume. In fat youngsters' bodies, these cells will become fat cells because they actually don't exercise very much. And for the rest of these kids' lives, they will have more unhealthy fat cells than other people, even if they do not overeat. In other words, fat cells get bigger or smaller depending on your diet. So the more fat cells you've got, the fatter you're likely to get. On the other hand, if youngsters develop muscles during adolescence, these undifferentiated cells will become muscle cells. And again, the same argument goes, those can be enlarged by exercise, and therefore they become, the muscles become bigger. Throughout life, these persons will have more muscle cells than average. Think of the disadvantages, how hard it can be for a fat child to make friends, join groups, have dates, play sports, or even compete with attractive slender persons for a job. Not to mention the increased risk of heart attack, stroke and other disease. So there you go, that's the reason for the website. And he goes on to say, most of the information about weight training and bodybuilding probably came from the mag muscle magazines. Constantly present contradictory information. Coverage on most areas of bodybuilding is spotty. Some topics will be beaten to death, some ignored, some misrepresented. Often they perpetuate unhealthy myths about exercise and nutrition. This book intended to go beyond that and to solve all the problems. And that's why as I said earlier, I set up my website, encouraged by a similar site in Russia, sportachievements.com. So there we go. That is the reason behind my website. Nothing more, nothing less. Mr. McGregor was totally wrong about that website, but unfortunately a number of people anonymously have believed every single word that Mr. McGregor said. Well, I hereby deny it, lock, stock and barrel.